Dear friends, good morning and welcome to Ethics Classes. First of all, let me introduce myself. You might have seen me last year taking class to your seniors. Now, I am in online and taking class to two batches, the third years and also third year, third year graduates. So welcome to this ethical classes. Ethics is one of the, what to say, a subject very interesting and also not very difficult in comparison with other ethical subjects. It is one of the easiest subject, but we have to put into practice it is in our, in our life. So it is not only for your exam, not only as a thing for your philosophical studies, more than that, it is for our life. And I have given you the introductory notes and also the notes of the historical session. But I think this first class is to introduce you once again, what is ethics and uh, what all are its meaning and importance, then it will be easy for you to follow the classes and the following discussions. Now, let us go deeper into the subject ethics. Ethics is something very, very natural and very, very important in our day-to-day -day life. We cannot think about our life without ethics or morality. For example, whatever we speak, or the newspaper we read, or the television we watch, in everything, we will be looking at the glass of ethics or morality. We are not just onlookers. Whenever something is happening in our society, we always look at those incidents with a glass of our moral understanding and moral principles and we just categorize them into two groups, whether it is good or whether it is bad or whether it is right or whether it is wrong. And this is what ethics. Everywhere you can find people speak morality. In tea shops, barber shops, seminaries, and political parties, everywhere people always speak ethics. So what's the difference between them? The ordinary way of discussing ethical problems and in the study hour, this ethics class. So that is something we have to note and that is very important in our studies. The normal way of speaking about morality or moral things or moral discourses, it is called the first order moral discourse. There, we are not worried about what all are the principles behind, what all are the metaphysics behind all this ethical speaking. For example, the hike in petrol and diesel rates. Now, everybody is discussing about it. And some people say, justifying it, it is very much needed. Some people criticizing it and telling it is something very bad, looting the people. And we speak, we take a one stage or the other. But we are not going deeper into why it is wrong or why it is good. What are the underlining principles behind that? And the first order discourse is just concentrating on the periphery, but there is something behind that, and that is called meta-ethics. That means the principles behind all this ethical speaking and discussions, and that is called meta-ethics, and that is what we are going to study in these classes. So that is called the second order moral discourses. You can refer it in your class notes. Now let's move with this introduction 
to what is the meaning of ethics and from where this word ethics came. Ethics is derived from the Greek, the word is ethos, again refer to the knot, and the corresponding Latin word is ethica, which means custom. Both ethos and ethica meaning custom or habitual way of living in a society, the habitual practices. For example, we Indians, when we greet people, we say Namaste. Not only in COVID time, but any time, it is the way we say Namaste. But if it is in Europe, they will say welcome with the handshaking. Or even we are closer, they will come and hug us. And it is something, the custom of that society, and it is something, the custom of our society. So the word ethos and ethica meaning in a general way, customs that is being practiced in a particular society. But ethics is though the word, the same word, same meaning, but there is some differences. Ethics is part of customs of a society, but more than that, that means only certain things that will be under the category or title of morality. Only such customs will come on under the term ethics or ethos or ethica. There are so many other practices in the society not having any relationship with the moral way of behaving. So there no ethics or no need of referring to ethics, but only what is concerned with the morality of the behavior of the people of particular society that is the part of ethics, ethos or ethica. And there is a corresponding word that is called moral. Same meaning ethics or moral. That is, that is why we say ethical philosophy or moral philosophy. Both are the same meaning synonymous. And this moral came from the Latin word mos. So we know the difference between what is customs and what is ethics. Though the root meaning are the same, but ethics only in a restricted sense that can be considered as a custom. Now let us go to the definition of ethics. As you know, ethics is a part of philosophy. And philosophy is divided into two basic groups. Don't misunderstand with the historical division, no. The ancient history, the modern history, no. I am not going to that. But the whole philosophy can be divided into two groups. The first group is called systematic philosophy. And the second group is called practical philosophy or normative philosophy. And we have the systematic philosophy, we have metaphysics started this Monday, then epistemology, then uh, all the, all, almost the major subjects will come under the systematic part of philosophy. But there are three subjects that is coming under the practical side of philosophy, they are ethics, aesthetics and logic. These are the three normative sciences or practical sciences. Once again, ethics, aesthetics and the logic. You have already learned your logic completed and you will be going to learn aesthetics and now it is the time of ethics. Why it is called a normative science? Because there are certain objective norms and regulations which are given and according to those norms, we have to make our judgments. Example, in logic, you have induction and deduction and the principles of induction and deduction. When you use those principles in your arguments, then you can have a valid statement. Otherwise, it is invalid. 
the same way there are certain ethical principles or norms of philosophy and when you have your behavior according to those norms the given norms then we can say we are ethically right otherwise we are ethically wrong so first of all then ethics is a philosophical science or else ethics is a philosophical science in a practical side okay then what is the material object of ethics material object of ethics is nothing but human behavior what all of things a man is doing in the society and also himself what all of things the human action that is the material object of ethics but many other sciences also using this human action as the material object for example psychology if the psychologist will look at you and the way you behave and they may conclude certain conclusions isn't it and also anthropology you are going to study or i don't know whether you have already learned that also concerned with the human actions how a man behave but ethics is having a difference from all these topics psychology anthropology etc half it is with its formal object so any topic any study any science they will that those will have two things a material object and a formal object material object is common to many topics many sciences but the formal object is a singular one it is particularly for for that subject alone now what is the formal object of ethics it is the goodness or evilness or the rightness or wrongness of that human action so we have the conclusion of the definition according to this ethics is a normative science which deals with the human action in so far as human action is viewed as good or bad or right or wrong you can refer or not this definition is given there ethics is a normative science which deals with the human action in so far as human action is known as good or bad or right or wrong so we are just concerned about the goodness or evilness or rightness or wrongness of a human action that is all the matter of ethics and we are going to study about it and when we study ethics first of all it's a reflective study with a personal responsibility all the other subjects only a reflective study we need not have a personal responsibility but ethics is having a personal responsibility meaning when we know this subject and when we know that how a person should behave it is our responsibility to do accordingly to live accordingly so this is a this is an important topic in our philosophical studies and what we are doing in this class to know what is good and when we know what is good our next concern is how to attain it then we have to know what is wrong what is bad evil when we know that then we should know how to avoid it then we should understand that what all of the implications all these things and finally we have to come to the conclusion what all are the norms and regulations which will regulate this topic i hope you understand this so we begin with the three facts of ethics that is the basic source of our study the the facts of ethics at least we can find there are three basic facts from which we can start our study these facts are coming from our daily experiences and also from the history the first fact is this if there is a society there will be these norms and regulations in the society guiding the people how to become good and how to become evil what all of the good things 
that must be done in that society and what are the evil things that must be avoided in that society. This distinction of goodness and evilness already inherent in all the societies. Even if it is a society of robbers, for example, our late Virapan, even in Virapan's community, they have the distinction between good and evil. Who is a good thief? Not according to the biblical sense, no. A good thief who is proficient enough in the burglary. And who is a bad one? Or who is a good liar? In any field, we can have this distinction, good and evil. And also in any society, we can find that there are certain regulations according to which this good and evil is being understood. And those who are following those regulations will be considered as good people. And those who are disobeying those, they are considered as bad people. This is prevalent in all the society. This is one of the basic fact regarding ethics. That is the first thing. Second, in any society you can find the terms rights and duties. What is the meaning of rights and duties? If you are a member of a particular society, automatically you may have certain rights to claim for. And again, the society will impose certain duties upon, upon, upon you that you have to perform. So, this is everywhere in all the societies. Otherwise, the society cannot proceed. So, there are certain rights and duties. This is also very prevalent in all the societies. That is the second fact of ethics. The first one now, there is a distinction between good and evil. And the second, people have the understanding of rights and duties. And the third, most important, it is something personal. Each and every individual within their heart, innermost, innermost being, they experience that there is always an inner voice and it is called a moral conscience. An inner voice telling, do this and avoid that. When we go against that inner conscience, then we will find Oh, it's so bad, the bad feeling we have, the remorse feeling we have. When we go according to that innermost being, then the voice, inner voice, and we will be happy, even if there is nobody there. So, this is the moral conscience in each and every human person. It is there. <coughs> so, these are the three facts of ethics we begin with. First, the distinction between good and evil. Second, the concept of rights and duties. And the third, the existence of moral conscience. So, from here, we go to the starting point. Ethics is using three moral postulates. And we know what is the meaning of a postulate. A postulate means something is taken for granted as true. That is called a postulate. And we are not going to prove whether it is right or wrong, whether it is true indeed. No, because it is already proved by other topics, other subjects. Otherwise, without a foundation, we cannot start, we cannot move, proceed. So, we need a starting point. For example, when, when you studied Descartes, he said, where to start? Everything is doubtful. But finally, he said, yes, even everything is doubtful, there is a doubting self that I cannot doubt. So, from that doubt, cogito ergo sum, I doubt or I think, therefore I exist. So, a starting point, unshakable starting point is needed. That means, something is taken for granted as true. From there, we proceed and find out the further principles. Regarding ethics, ethics is using three postulates or starting points. One is taken from psychology. The psychological postulate says, a human being is made up of matter, 
and soul, body and soul, the Aristotelian principle, the Thomistic principle, hylomorphism. Man is not separated being, but he is a combination of matter and form or the body and soul. That means any behavior a person should approach these two aspects, his spiritual being, well-being and also his material well-being. This is a fact that we have to proceed from this. That is, that is from psychology. Then, or even anthropology, we have that. And uh, second, we are taken from epistemology. Ep epistemology proved that human reason, the capacity of human reason, is a reliable and a powerful source of knowledge. By human reason alone, we can understand the truth. It is a matter of epistemology. So, human reason is a reliable source of knowledge and a trustworthy source of knowledge. So, we are using this human reason as our as a help to proceed in our ethical studies. And finally, we take one more thing, one more postulate from theodicy, the science of religion. There, the existence of God as a father, as a creator and as a provider and with all the attributes of God, God is omniscient, omnipotent and all the attributes of God, we have taken it granted that if there is a God, then the ethical study will be more useful and more powerful. So, these three things we are not going to prove in ethics whether God exists or not. We just took it for granted like Immanuel Kant. Kant said, philosophically and scientifically, I am not able to prove or disprove existence of God, but for ethics I need God. The same we take in the position of Kant. Yes, we need God. So, these are the three postulates we use in ethical studies. So, as our starting point. Then, what method we use in ethics? Nothing but the logical method of induction and deduction. These are the two methods we use in this study. Generalizing and particularizing or particularizing and generalizing. And I have given you the history of ethical thoughts. The ancient world, the middle ages, then the modern period and the contemporary or the postmodern. I have given you the knot, how it was developed, how this concept of ethics developed. And if you have any doubt in our next classes, you can just ask questions or you have doubts, then we will discuss it. And now, when we go into deeper into this study, we have two types of approaches to ethics, two way of approaching ethics. And there is an all author called L. Baukamp in his philosophical ethics, he suggests these fourfold approaches to the study of ethics. He first divided the whole study into two groups, non-normative and normative. What is the meaning of non-normative approach? Non-normative approach and a normative approach. These are the two basic division of our approaches to our ethical classes. Not only ethical classes, in any classes as such. Or in our life as such, when we look at things, we can have these two divisions, a non-normative approach and a normative approach. First, the, a non-normative approach, that means, we are not at all using any particular norm as our guideline to judge a thing. We are not using any particular norm as a guideline for our judgment. So, without a judgment, we try to understand things. That is called a non-normative approach. For example, when you read a newspaper, normally, a newspaper's function is to just, just tell you 
what all are the news what all are the things incidents happened there they should not have any particular side view and telling okay that was wrong that was right that's a part of the editorial of the newspaper or any tv news when you watch the news reader should just explain to you what all the things happened and he is not a judge he is not a police officer he is not an investigator no he is just narrating things just placing in front of you these are the things happened like a tv screen that is called a non normative approach there are no politics no party basis no religion no caste basis but just presenting it no norms or guidelines there no judgments there but many of our newspapers and the tv news readers they consider themselves as judges and the judge no but there were discussions there the people can have a normative outlook i may be representing a congress party man and my opponent a communist party there may be a bjp there may be a kerala congress a muslim league then they fight because each one is having a norm particular norm or guideline and they will be approaching that particular problem with their own guidelines such things are called a normative if there is no guidelines it is non normative so bau camp our author telling us ethics the first of all we should enter into the topic of ethics with a non normative mind and he says it can be two first thing descriptive ethics that means just to describe or try to just explain and i am standing here now as with the descriptive ethics that it means i am just explaining to you what all are the ethical theories what all are the schools what all are the ethical concerns and i am not at all taking any side i just take away i'm a catholic priest or i'm just take away i'm a person from kerala now everything the language religion everything i take away and just explaining to you yes this is the thing of ethics that is called a descriptive ethics then again one more thing in non normative ethics that is called meta ethics that means we studied metaphysics metaphysics means something beyond physics the same way meta ethics means something beyond ethics that means the underlining principles which are the guidelines for ethics that also we are not going to take any side of it no so these two approaches are called non normative ethics that means descriptive ethics and meta ethics then after studying this non normative ethics we have to take our own stand that is the normative ethics that means with the guidelines there i will stand as a catholic priest you will be standing as according to your formation and you according to your moral learning so it is called again general normative that means we can have in all the field of ethics we can have our opinion and our judgment then we have to take a stand and it again one more thing is called applied ethics that means a particular aspect of ethics that means medicine when we have our own stand and when we discuss things that is called applied ethics medical ethics or media ethics or seminary ethics or business ethics or film ethics and all these things are called applied ethics we are just applying our principles so i hope you understand the different approaches to the study of ethics that means non normative and normative